Hello and welcome to a very special round of the TM Master Cup Series, a race that we couldn't have dreamed of when the series first began. The inaugural round of Xanarkin here on the Promenade. This is a circuit unlike any other that we've seen before, and we're very excited to be here. This 14-turn course has more elevation changes than any track the series has ever visited outside of Road Gatineau. However, the racing line here is relatively narrow and the cars tend to get very unstable across some of the elevation changes, particularly in turns 5 and 6. It has led to some concerns among some drivers about first lap pileups. Because there is no runoff area anywhere on the circuit, if there are cars stranded in any part of the circuit other than turn 1 or on the way into turn 14, that full course yellows will be thrown in order to recover them. Otherwise, it's just putting track workers in too much risk and too much danger, especially since this track is only 14 meters wide. With that being said, this is undoubtedly one of the most spectacular circuits the series has ever visited, and we can't wait to see 46 cars roar around this circuit. So before we get underway, let's introduce the starting grid. Taking his first pole since the season opener in San Antonio, Marco Diaz Castaneda will have the whole field in his mirrors when the green lights go out. Scott Stoidler will be alongside him in the front row with a promoter's option. Norway's Ingrid Hadland and Ohio's Cameron Taylor make up row two. Row three sees Adrian Devereaux and Chris Davenport, the Michelin Suns teammates, less than a tenth of a second apart in qualifying. Row four, David Krikorian and reigning champion Arto Kekkonen. Row five, Liv Eklund and Zelda Ashby in car 55. Russian Yevgeny Kuznetsov and American Kurt Pliskin have both won this year, looking to add to those totals. They make up row 6. Row 7, points leader Saul Fischl in car number 8 and Greg Woodard in car 41. Row 8, another promoter's option, Vincenzo Fochisato in the FIAM and Joe Olenek. Row 9 is a married couple, Carter Fitzgerald and Ryan Matthews for the Matthews Motorsports team. Row 10, Morgan Lafay and Daffy Howard, both promoter's options. Row 11, Luciano Savarola of Brazil and Alessandro Rossini of Italy. Very excited to see Darian Gilliam finally make his debut in car 35. He starts alongside Ian Cooper in row 12. Row 13, Woody Watts with another promoter's option and Texan Connor Friel. Row 14, Clayton Hardy, the first Native American driver since 2002, and Gaspar D'Souza. Row 15, Marcus Leonard, the popular Canadian, sits alongside Craig Janser in car 81. Tom Moore and Packer Carroll back at row 16. Carroll was seventh fastest in final practice, believe it or not. Chuck Johnson and Tony Durbin make up row 17. Row 18 sees Truman Ellison in car 50. And German Lucas Grabert in car 34. Go ba going back to row 19, Christina Orion will make history when she takes the green flag today. She and Liv Eklund will be the first trans women to compete as teammates in the TM Master Cup Series. Kenny Myatt sits alongside her. Timothy Ruiz in an orange car. And Daniel Lecklet of the Wales winner. Brandon LaRoe and Zach Webster in row 21 looking for more. Ike Durbin and Scott Bates both waved off their times in qualifying. They went out for a second run. Both went slower. Lewis Kingston is back with a promoter's option, and he did likewise. Went very slow and hit the wall in his final qualifying run. And rounding out the field is Gareth Hunt, who did not take part in qualifying, but since he set competitive speeds in practice, he'll take his place at the back of the grid. Looks like we have a minute or two before the field gets underway. I want to get everyone up to speed with some of the appeals that have happened after the controversy during the round of Minnesota, in particular, what was perceived to be a scoring error. Luciano Savarola and Saul Fischel were retroactively put on the lead lap after appeal, putting Fischel in second and Savarola in third. As you might expect, Hot as Walter Racing was protesting the loudest among most in the paddock because of course they are going to lose a podium result because of this. A follow-up hearing to clarify this decision is going to be before the round of Ohio. The garage certainly needs to be able to trust race control to do the right thing in what should be some very basic procedures and decisions. The other appeal of note was Lynx Racing. The electronics on board Liv Eklund and Alicia Reyes' cars were found to not be legal and both were disqualified from the round of Minnesota. Lynx Racing appealed the disqualification, and in a case that I don't think anyone expected to ever be overturned, it was. Meaning that Eklund and Reyes were reinstated to the round of Minnesota, and neither will lose points or prize money. Which means this is what the Drivers' Championship looks like as of right now. I have a look at that before we get underway.
All 46 cars and drivers are waiting for the flag to send them on their way to do battle for 30 laps across this most unique circuit. Castaneda on the left in the red car, Scott Stoidler on the right. And here we go. Good start from Castaneda as he tries to cover Stoidler, but he leaves. Yeah, he leaves the outside open for Hadeland. Couple of cars being very aggressive further back. Castaneda gets away cleanly in car number nine and around goes Fischl in the back. Car number eight, Fischl's around, Olenix involved. Rossini got a piece of that. So did Cooper. D'Souza looks like Packer Carroll. And Craig Yatzer gets in, Fischl's upside down. The points leader is upside down. That's gonna be a yellow it is. Full course yellow is out on the first lap. And that was caused. Looked like Joe Olenek in the 23 has sent it in three wide when there wasn't enough space for it. That's Leonard he's running with. Uh, right now, Olenek, oh, he pushes wide outside. Leonard into the wall, Moore's involved. We've got more drama already. Truman Ellison involved. And that's Ruiz in the orange car uh, taking evasive action. As the field now racing back to the yellow, you'd expect most of them to uh, to, uh, sort of take it easy on their way back, but that's not always the case. A very hectic first couple of corners, but uh, we see now Castaneda's got a pretty sizable lead in car number nine. Hadeland up to second, Stoidler back to third. Then you see Cameron Taylor as you look for where your favorite is running. It may be a little hard to pick some of them out. You see there Connor Friel and Leonard coming through. And then here's everyone that was involved, either involved or held up by some of the earlier dramas. And these are the cars that are gonna really benefit uh, from this yellow being thrown. As here is the leader, Marco Castaneda. Of course, at the beginning of the season, he proclaimed he wasn't the, be wasn't the most skilled road racer on the, uh, on the circuit, and his TM Lights results certainly uh, seem to indicate that. However, uh, ever since the season began, he's been quite strong on the road courses. Remember, he won earlier at Road Atlanta. Now on board with Joe Lenick off the line. That's Woodard right in front of him in the 41. And Lenick comes inside, shoves, uh, shoves into Woodard and Fischl, who kind of closed the door on Woodard a bit. But uh, at the same time, that looked like that was first lap red miss there from Lenick. And uh, if, there, if you have to pin it on anyone, it has to be him because he could have bailed out of that a little earlier than he did, but didn't look like he was willing to. If that has to be blamed on anyone, as now we've gotten the restart and you saw the penalty issue. As Castaneda leads the field to the green, several cars towards the back appear to have pitted under this yellow. Um, we'll have to we'll update you on who did and who didn't when uh, when we can. As Hadeland begins the challenge, Castaneda on the outside. That's a bold move from the Norwegian. Uh, she's trying to take over the lead early. Ingrid Hadeland, the Cariola winner, who also won out of Minnesota, and Connor Friel's in trouble. Connor Friel in car 68. Uh, Looks like, no, I don't see any smoke. Looks like he probably broke a gear in the, that 68. Oh no, there's a little bit of smoke coming out the back. Yep, he should be, oh, Morgan LaFay's in trouble in the 49. Cooper's involved, and, uh, and everyone trying to get through. That's Lucas Grabert, I think. Morgan LaFay got turned around. We'll have to see what happened there. No yellow, LaFay's gotten away. So here is, here's why, what, looking at Greg Woodard and Fuchisato as they got together. And Woodard spun backwards, and that's where LaFay got collected. Looked like Woodard and um, Fuchisato just both slipped coming up over in turn six. A lot of cars getting very, very uh, loose when the uh, around turn six, and that's what's causing uh, some of these early dramas, I think. Lucas Grabert, that's the Germans definitely out of it, and that's rather unfortunate. That's uh, new sponsor Qualtoms had three really bad races already. Lewis Kingston in the 108 car uh, spent a little bit longer in the pits. And he's uh, well down the running order, but it's good to see him back in the 108 Auto Guard car. Uh, we should be seeing more appearances from this car, hopefully, in the future. So this hopefully won't be the last we see of him. Back up to the battle for third with Cameron Taylor and Scott Stoidler. Pass pit entry down, going into turn 14. Taylor's got the place, and Stoidler going to have to settle into fourth. Taylor having good start to... Oh, no, they touch! Stoidler clipped the back of Taylor, and they're both into the wall. Lots of damage to Cameron Taylor in the seven and to Scott Stoidler in the 26. That's, that was purely unnecessary. I think Stoidler should have backed out of that one. Taylor didn't have, um, the only thing Taylor didn't have clear was a bumper, but usually as Eklund roughs him up a little bit, usually the standard of course is whether or not you have a wheel on somebody in the series. And um, at least that's what uh, usually is in race control for incidents like this. And Taylor's gonna have to go all the way around at the racetrack with a wounded race car 
you see Kakinen's gone by, Stoiler now going by, and uh, that's that's hurt Stoiler's car as well. So I think Scott Stoiler hurt his own chances with that, not just Taylor's, because they both dropped well down the order as Taylor hits the wall, and I think Kurt Pliskin in the EFNY car also got into the wall a bit. As we see the two Matthews Motorsports cars doing battle with each other, that's Carter Fitzgerald and husband Ryan Matthews. They are the second married couple to race against each other in the Master Cup Series. As you saw on the left side, you may have seen uh, Connor Friel in the pits. Of course, Alexis Rainsford and Chris Davenport were the first. Fitzgerald now having a run on Taylor, who may be trying to fight this, although I don't think that I don't think he's going to have any uh, ground to do Oh! Fitzgerald into the wall a bit in the 60 car. Just a brush of the wall, but that that's going to rile her up, that's for sure, because uh, Taylor definitely should be pulling off, should be moving out of the way, letting people go if he's got a car that's that badly hurt. We now look at Brandon LaRoe in car number 25, uh, making a move on Marcus Leonard. LaRoe on the inside, they make contact. LaRoe into the wall, Leonard into the wall. D'Souza involved, Ike Durbin involved. Looks like everyone's able to get away from that, but uh, that was a case of over-exuberance on Brandon LaRoe's part. He sent it into turn one, it didn't stick, and he really the only way that wasn't going to uh, result in a crash is if Leonard just disappeared into thin air. Moreau gave him no room to avoid that. As we now look at Saul Fischel, who is the last car still running, Official is a lap behind Lewis Kingston, who is the second to last car running. As uh, Kingston waving him by, Official doesn't have anything to run for really, except for the bonus money given to whoever gets the fastest lap of the race, and I think he's definitely going to go for it. Uh, here is Marco Castaneda leading Ingrid Hadeland, the running order on the left side. Everyone running below 29th place, pitted at some point under the yellow flag. However, given how many incidents a lot of those cars have been involved with since, the loss in track position outweighs any net gains this strategy might get for them. For the brand watchers out there, Castaneda and Hadeland are both driving in Gesslers. Gregorian and Devereaux are in Colton Morels. In fact, there are four Colton Morels and four Gesslers in the top ten right now. As we look back at the SAR of Darian Gilliam, car number 35, bit of a slide out of the last corner into the side of Woody Watts' Lycoya. Bit of a retro theme going on there with Watts' car, number 61. This is one of the more popular debutants, uh, Gilliam is. A young man out of Las Vegas who's been running in the TM Light Series for a while. Uh, with a little bit of success as he has to tuck behind Woody Watts. He's running in 19th place as Gilliam. Uh, it's the same team he runs with in the TM Light Series as that's a dive. Hey, I think he took Watts by surprise there and he's going to get the place. That's going to move him up to 18th if he's able to pull this off around the outside in 3 and 4. Yes, he is, it looks like. Good, clever move from the debutant Gilliam. And now we look back at Clayton Hardy in the Arasaka car number 31. There's been a lot of larger teams looking at him because uh, Hardy's background is in endurance sports car racing, long distance racing. He's wanted to give stock cars a try. In fact, we're going to be seeing him in a couple of ovals uh, in, the, in the near future. So uh, keep an eye out for him. First driver to represent a Native American nation since 2002. Of course, there have been other drivers of Native American descent that have uh, represented the United States. As now we look at Christina O'Ryan, uh, one of Lynx's other drivers in the TM Light Series. You see the pride stripes on the side of car number 80. Uh, O'Ryan and Liv Eklund are the first trans women to be teammates in the Master Cup Series, and I have to emphasize that there have been uh, several gender non-conforming drivers in the series uh, this year. In fact, it's really been wonderful to see Lynx Racing actually taking diversity seriously and not just using it as a corporate PR talking point. The paddock has noticed. Uh, Adrian Devereaux running in third here in car number 74. That is David Krikorian uh, directly behind him. Of course, uh, Krikorian largely got that ride because of Devereaux's influence. Devereaux sort of uh, becoming a bit more of an elder statesman in the paddock, uh, taking that responsibility very seriously. As now we have Liv Eklund here doing battle with uh, Chris Davenport, Devereaux's teammate in the uh, sort of Royal Blue 17 car. Eklund a bit wide as uh, Davenport trying to set her up on the outside like we saw Darian Gillum able to do. Uh, he's not able to get the um, same amount of momentum, though. Those, those Lynx cars down some of these straights are just really, really fast, sort of like what we saw at Cariola. As you look at Vincenzo Pochisato and Luciano Savarol, and they're both around. I was just about to remark that this is a great... Oh, no! No, that's what he wants. He got nowhere to go there. I was just about to remark on how the FIAM is having such a good run so far as we now look at Ingrid Hadeland and Marco Castaneda doing battle for the race lead. Hadeland trying to clear Castaneda off the last corner. Is she able to do it? No. Castaneda having a run on the outside down the front straightaway. Drag race towards the first corner. No one anywhere near Hadeland and Castaneda as they have pulled well clear from the pack. Into turn one. Hadeland sends it in. Not clear of Castaneda and they're both in the wall. 
Castaneda in the wall, Hadland in the wall. This is in one of the few places where they can actually recover cars, so no yellow. Now here we are, that's how close they were alongside each other. That's the same thing that happened with Leroux and Leonard. Hadland was not at all clear. Just sent it in and gave and just gave Castaneda no room at all. And just took both cars out. Very unnecessary, but Hadland just going for the lead and trying extremely hard, trying way too hard for it, and just took herself out. And Castaneda furious about that. And it's hard to blame him as now. That's put David Krikorian in the lead of the race as we missed him overtake Adrian Devereaux. And Devereaux is now going to have to deal with Liv Eklund, who is, who is hounding all over him. And here is uh, Davenport now dealing with Lewis Kingston. And Arto Kakinen trying to split them. Kingston moves out of the way. And uh, Davenport and Ka Kakinen going to try Davenport in the outside here? No, I think no, I think Kakinen's a bit more sensible than that. Davenport defends that. But Kakinen definitely showing himself in the mirrors there. As we now look at Zach Webster in the 87 car. Uh, now this is a man who definitely needed a good run because there were some rumblings about his position in the team. He hasn't been running all that well. Craig Yeltsin, who has not been in a Master Cup car in a very long time, has sort of blown him out of the water. And uh, there's uh, Zach Webster really, really needs a good showing to, uh, in a race soon. And this, he's definitely got one so far. Now that's an assertive move in turn one. I think that's the move that Leroux was attempting. But uh, to try to do a slide job right in front of the guy behind you. But he actually made it work, so good move there on uh, Webster's part. Here is Devereaux now trying to hold off Eklund, who is uh, all over him in that uh, 74 car. These two uh, very differently colored yellow cars, very easy to spot, and uh, they've had some minor run-ins in uh, so far this season. And here's another driver who's off to a pretty good start to the, uh, this race that's running a little bit further down the order. Packer Carroll in the 71, and Scott Bates in the 6. Now, both of these cars, neither of them qualified well. In fact, Bates qualified, started all the way back in 44th. He's up to 24th. And while, in, while attrition has definitely uh, been a factor, um, uh, pace certainly has also been a big factor because he has been carving through the field as Luciano Savarol uh, is apparently uh, insistent on making his own position uh, worse as uh, I don't think the tires are his only problem, especially after that little slide. Uh, that's going to happen after you have an incident like that as uh, the Tenere of Daniel Lechleiter clears him and Savarol's not going to be very happy about that I would imagine as we now look at Daffy Howard in the double zero duck car that white yellow and teal car in the center of the screen running up in 13th place uh, the selection committee has been very very uh, favorable to Howard and getting him a promoter's option here of course Howard well known in his short career for excellent car control and he continues to put that on display here not having any handling problems really at all probably the only car on track that really hasn't as we now go back to the battle for second where Liv Eklund has really begun to apply pressure to Adrian Devereaux Devereaux the former three-time champion trying to keep the rookie in his mirrors it's a little wide in turn 13 Eklund sticks her nose on the inside she's gonna get a great run down the ramp here as uh, they make a run down towards turn 14 there they go, past pit entry, Eklund, the yellow, red, and blue car. On the inside, she slides up a little bit, doesn't give Devereaux a whole lot of room. It's a little bit, of, little bit loose on exit, a little bit of contact as well. Adrian Devereaux in car number 74, doing everything he can to hang on to second place. He's got a, a good advantage in Eklund down the front straightaway. Now that's interesting, as Eklund really throwing it into turn one. Side by side, contact a little bit, trading a bit of paint there. As Eklund able to try to muscle her way past Devereaux, no, not quite yet. As um, now, now, there she goes. Now she has second place. But here comes Chris Davenport in that royal blue and gray 17 car right back there. Eklund, Devereaux, and Davenport, the two Michelin Suns cars, pounding the rookie. As Eklund really be really putting on a good show this season so far. As oh, a little a little loose there as off of turn six. But then again, uh, but then again, it's not exactly a small number of cars that have had problems over there throughout the weekend. Devereaux trying again in turn seven, but Eklund's going to repel the challenge. She's looking very, very strong right now in second place. As we now look at David Krikorian in car number 13, the race leader who is beginning to pull away a little bit. Uh, he's set the fastest lap of the race last time by, so DK really enjoying all of the battling that the rest of the field is doing. He can just uh, go on for a little bit of a drive, but um, we'll see what he's uh, running this time by. Goes even faster, 1 minute 30.325. David Krikorian really setting a blistering pace here. Uh, I'll have to see how much, uh, we'll have to see if that uh, comes to bite him later with uh, how much might be abusing the tires. But he's really trying to pull away as the Michelin Suns teammates do battle here. 
Devereaux and Davenport. Davenport on the inside. Oh, Devereaux gives him just enough room, giving Davenport plenty of space. Of course, early in his career, Davenport was known for a series of spins and accidents, and it earned him the nickname Crash Davenport. However, that nickname mostly fell out of fashion after Michael Sykes gave him the nickname Captain Eyeliner, largely because of Davenport's fashion sense. And that nickname is actually rather coveted by Liv Eklund, the driver who he's chasing down, and looks like Davenport's gonna make that stick on the outside of Adrian Devereaux. That's a good move there by Davenport. Up to third place, and now he has to run down Liv Eklund, who's beginning to pull away from him. But Davenport having a very good evening so far. As you look back at Timothy Ruiz and Vincenzo Pochisato, this is the battle for 18th. Uh, Ruiz in the orange livery instead of his usual white livery that he normally runs. Into turn one they go as Ruiz a little bit wide. pochisato has got to run on him and the Italian's going to try to get him or get him in turn two. Ruiz way wide in two. He's oh up. He's in the wall. Just brushed the wall a little bit. Ruiz gave up that one though. He had to. Didn't really have any other option. Uh, Ruiz having a very good season as we now look back at Kurt Plistin in the EFNY car number 16 doing battle with his teammate, Greg Woodard in the 41. Liskin also a little wide, oh! Liskin brushes the wall there as well. And that is Howard beginning to uh, hunt him down. Daffy Howard beginning to chase down Pliskin, and Pliskin's gonna have to defend from a very aggressive Daffy Howard, who is uh, well in control of things at the moment, uh, as far as uh, that race car is concerned anyway. Howard, look at that, Howard very smooth coming off of turn six. Oh, yachts are wide! as Craig Yonser in the 81 car, the Scarabs entry. Now he is having a very, very rough evening there in that car. Packer Carroll beginning to run him down. Yonser, uh, there's that car is all beat up already. And uh, Craig Yonser having a rough evening as it is. David Krikorian in car number 13, not pitting yet. Pit window is opening. We thought Krikorian would be one of the first cars to pit. That is not the case. Woodard is in. Woodard is in in car 41. And uh, you see, get a good look at that livery, the blue, yellow, and red car. Uh, Rossini in as well in car number three. He's having a good night as well, uh, especially given how his year has gone. Packer Carroll running down Craig Yonser, who again nearly wipes out the 81. Uh, as Carroll gets by, he's going to be able to uh, clear Yonser. And the Ultor livery there, car, the uh, 71 car. Whoa, that was a little bit dangerous. I think that was a late call, and I think Packer Carroll, though, into the pits. Here's David Krikorian pitting at almost exactly half distance. This a little bit past half distance. Oh, Davenport, all sorts of sideways as he comes in. Davenport pitting with David Krikorian. Now we're on board with Darian Gilliam. Now let's have a look at the rather unique pit lane here at Zanarkand, as that is Howard right in front of him. On board with the 35, Darian Gilliam. Now there is some pit stalls on the right side. That's where Howard is pitted. As you uh, get a good idea of what you can see from the uh, Looking above you and up, out to either side, of course. A lot of most of the pit stalls are on the left side. However, some on the right. You see more of them coming up on the right side here. That's where some of the cars are qualified at the uh, front of the gridder are uh, pitting. And of course, Gilliam's stall is right here at the end on the left side. There it is. As he's going to get service there, as Orion beats him out. Now, now Orion was behind him. Uh, before this pit stop, that is uh, also Clayton Hardy now right on his tail in the 31. Darian Gilliam, the, the debutante out of Vegas, going to have to defend from Hardy as he brushes the wall, I think, a little bit on pit exit. Two debutante drivers here as uh, Gilliam may have to surrender this place because uh, Hardy's got a good run on the outside of him. Maybe not, though, because they're both on cold tires. As uh, Gilliam hangs on and Orion begins to stretch a bit of a gap between them. And uh, now coming into uh, turn five, I see there's a lot of damage on the right side of that uh, of the 35. Darian Gilliam though be holding on as Hardy tries to get the tires up to temperature and he begins to pull away a little bit. Now looking at Liv Eklund who has uh, now inherited the race lead now that Gregorian is pitted. And oh wide, very wide, almost into the wall as uh, Liv Eklund uh, hanging onto that car. Uh, that is uh, Daniel Lecklader that she's uh, putting a lap on, and that's Truman Ellison in the background. Eklund peels off, one of the last cars to pit. Daniel Lecklader in car number 10, having a pretty solid evening so far. Uh, of course, Tenares, he's got his first win earlier in the year. That's his teammate, Ken Maia, right there in the 70. And uh, he's going to have to hold station there. That's the 50 of Truman Ellison coming. Oh, they make contact! Contact, that's a bump and run there on a teammate. That's not nice as Liv Eklund, great work there by Lynx Racing's crew to get Eklund out in a, in a very good amount of time. She's got she's gotten the lead. She's, that's David Krikorian right there. That's Eklund with the overcut. That's amazing stuff. So Eklund must have put in a couple of really good laps. 
I know, and made the overcut work. That is Krikorian in her mirrors. And now Eklund in the lead of the race. Ryan Matthews in the 06 car is another car that pitted very, very late, and he has vaulted up the running order as a result in this 06 car. Matthews Motorsports really having, doing a good job there because Carter Fitzgerald, the team car, is in the top 10 as well. Here's Scott Bates in the, in the sixth, who's also made up a lot of ground in this pit stop cycle, along with Timothy Ruiz right in front of him. Scott Bates having a very good run so far. He started all the way back in 44th, and he's running up in the top 10. Great drive so far from the popular veteran from Oklahoma. And now we look at Daffy Howard, who's currently running in fifth place. He's got Adrian Devereaux in the bright yellow car right behind him. It looks like Devereaux may have uh, repaired some of the damage that he incurred uh, from scraping some of the walls. And as they go by Marcus Leonard, the Canadian having a rough evening so far. And uh, Howard is well in control of the situation here. We'll see if he's able to hang on. As if Devereaux, He doesn't give Devereaux a whole lot of room uh, to make a move on him. Devereaux filling his mirrors. And Devereaux may, oh, Devereaux, I think, may have given him a tiny shot. But either way, uh, Devereaux able to get around. Howard looks like he's going to do it before they even get to turn five. Uh, not quite. Yes, looks like now Devereaux's gotten around him. Howard fades back. As now we're looking back at Gilliam in the 35 car. He's pulled away a little bit from Hardy. But also, I think he's beginning to run down Christina Ryan. And this could be a fun little battle at the bottom end of the points finishers here. He's running in 15th place. So the strategy for this 35 car appears to be working out quite well. As here is Scott Bates again doing battle with Ruiz and Rossini. See some extra damage there on the three car, so I think he's gotten into the wall and we missed it. Bates having a run on Ruiz. So he can be able to make this run a work into turn five. Yes, he looks like he is. The green car there is Zelda Ashby in the 55. Ruiz sideways, Rossini sideways, and Ashby also sideways. As they're trying to run down Greg Woodard in eighth. Bates gets around Ruiz and he's and he's up to ninth from 44th. Great evening so far, and that's just continuing as uh, he tries to stretch his advantage a little bit there. And now we look at Ryan Matthews in the 06 car, who is trying to hold off Adrian Devereaux, who has just set the fastest lap of the race. Adrian Devereaux is flying as he uh, hunts down Matthews. These are two of the older drivers on the grid, and you may have noticed not as much damage on these two cars. Devereaux had damage on that car earlier. But Ryan Matthews has kept a clean uh, clean sheet, and that's, I think, uh, helping his case quite a bit. Devereaux making a move on Matthews, going into the last corner. Uh, we hopefully won't see anything silly here. Matthews and Devereaux giving each other just enough space. Matthews crowding Devereaux a little bit. Hard and fair racing there. You may notice Matthews laid off of Devereaux. Once it looked like uh, it would be a little too close for comfort. Devereaux giving Matthews some room as they can go by Ike Durbin in that uh, sort of lavender colored 69 car. And not exactly getting out of the way quickly enough. Uh, there he goes, uh, Durbin out of the way. D uh, Matthews through, Devereaux now peeks his nose in and this battle's going to resume. Devereaux trying to make this work on the outside so they can get mo momentum for a run into turn five. And Matthews gonna see if he's able to hold on, but we haven't seen too many people able to do so. Usually they've just been able to carry more momentum through turn four, and Matthews lets him go. Matthews gives him enough space. And that's what happens when you get two drivers with a lot of respect for each other, a lot of mutual respect giving each other, a lot of hard, fair racing out there, and I think they'll be talking about this battle for uh, uh, for a while uh, afterwards, because that, that was some great stuff right there between two of the veterans in the series. Here is Christina Orion now. She's been caught by Gilliam, it looks like. And now they're going around Leonard, and yeah, Orion's been in the wall again. And crowding Leonard towards the wall is not a smart idea. As here comes Gilliam now with a run down the front straightaway. He smells blood, and by that I mean 14th place. Orion's going to have to fend this off as best she can. Uh, these are two drivers with a lot of uh, familiarity with each other because they both run the TM Light Series. Gilliam squeezing Orion into the wall. I think he got crossed up there. Uh, he's on a bit of a slide in the wall there, and he's he going to be able to hang on to it. Looks like he is. He makes the move stick anyway. So Gilliam with a uh, uh, fades a row Ryan into the wall a bit, but he's able to make that move stick. I don't think that's going to go over terribly well with uh, Orion and Lynx racing, perhaps. But um, oh, Gilliam wide, he's into the wall. And so uh, that car is definitely not handling all that well, and uh, he's just hanging on. So I think uh, that's a little. I think that's a case of Gilliam's car just not handling. And, uh, oh, and uh, that's what caused that incident with Orion. As Kuznetsov, you have Jenny Kuznetsov in the 15 car, that white, red, and blue car, is uh, starting to close in on this battle as well. So if these two keep at it for long enough, uh, Kuznetsov uh, may very well find himself uh, taking 14 from both of them. As Orion showing her nose to Gilliam, who is not phased by it, 
He's trying to hang on to it as uh, Kuznetsov is getting even closer. Orion trying to set him up in turns 13 for a run into 14. She, here she goes. Orion having a run. Oh, she got a bit sideways and then got off of turn 13. Not going to have a whole lot of momentum going into the last corner. Kuznetsov wad, watching and waiting in the background there. And now he's really closing in. Gilliam, oh, Darian Gilliam closed up on corner exit, defending that very aggressively. So a uh, good bit of defending there by Gilliam, but also uh, but, uh, as now we look at Liv Eklund, who is uh, beginning to pull away from it? Uh, pull away from David Krikorian. She's got that's uh, Daniel Lechleiter in the ten there. Uh, Lechleiter trying to hang on to his position, but the, he's not under any pressure from anyone around him. Eklund coming through on turn five, or is she going to? She gives Lechleiter a lot of room, and Lechleiter uh, letting her go. Oh, Lechleiter sideways around goes around goes Eklund. Around goes the race leader after contact with Lechleiter, who had a big slide coming into into turn six. He was. He couldn't hang on to it. She's going to lose the lead. Is she going to lose second to Davenport? Oh, that wasn't your fault. That absolutely wasn't. I don't know what. That, we're going to have another look at that here. As Lechleiter, that car is all crossed up. Oh, Eklund was sideways as well, but Lechleiter got that thing sideways and around he went. And uh, nothing up. It wasn't uh, Lechleiter's fault, that's for sure. He just lost, he, uh, lost it, and Eklund also lost it, but I think that pass should have been completed a lot earlier than it was. And that's the, that's what happens sometimes when you uh, sometimes give some lap cars a bit too much space when they're under no pressure themselves. As now David Krikorian has reassumed the race lead. There's Johnson and Lechleiter. He's able to get by both of them, uh, not by wasting any time with them and just going through. David Krikorian knows a fair bit about uh, doing about uh, dealing with some lap cars and here is Davenport now all over Eklund and uh, he is going to really begin to hassle Eklund and uh, uh, Eklund see if that is Kingston now Eklund making a bit more of a uh, early move but Kingston's waving him by well, Lewis Kingston very much a gentleman behind the wheel these days as uh, Davenport trying to uh, uh, get second but Eklund really not giving him any room at all uh, to make that maneuver but uh, he, she may not have and, uh, she may not have a choice in the matter because that car not not handling so well off of two, and she's gonna have to, she has to lift off earlier. Dav is Davenport gonna finally make a move on the outside here? Stick on her turn five. Oh, what do you know? He's boxing her behind the ten. Oh, that's a now that's how you know that someone's got a little bit of experience when they are uh, a little bit better at navigating some of the traffic. As Eklund slides into it, Davenport a little bit, and I think Davenport's gonna. Where is the ten car going? And yes, Lechleiter, oh, that's where he's going, into the wall. Oh, Lechleiter to the wall again. Eklund slides up almost into him. And I uh, don't think there was any ranker there from the 11, but uh, Davenport got the place just from uh, just from being a bit more savvy at navigating traffic as we're in the closing stages of the race here as Clayton Hardy doing battle with Luciano Savarol. Hardy, big slide. Uh, Clayton Hardy having a very good debut uh, for uh, a new driver in a Hassan racing car. His feedback has been, uh, you can tell that he's had a lot of impact on the setups of Tim Ruiz and Chuck Johnson's cars. As here is Tony Durbin uh, making a move on Marcus Leonard. I believe this is actually for position. And oh, Durbin squeezing Leonard into the wall. And I don't think anyone's really learned that squeezing Marcus Leonard into a wall is not a good idea because that's done more damage to Tony Durbin, looks like, than Leonard, who's just kept his foot in it. Looking at Carter Fitzgerald, who's had a very uh, quiet and very strong run, running in seventh. That's Truman Ellison! Oh no, we have more backmarker dramas. Oh, Fitzgerald is upset. She is not happy about that. And that is, I believe she thinks that uh, the 50 car is responsible for that. And, uh, definitely showing a bit of, uh, uh, definitely not happy about it. And she ran, uh, uh, she ran Ellison into the wall up there in turn 13. Definitely not happy about it. And she uh, has every right to be upset because uh, Ellison maybe should have uh, let her go a little earlier. And now he's under threat from Packer Carroll as uh, Chris Davenport's now beginning to pull away from Eklund. All the damage that Eklund incurred, they're really beginning to slow her down as Davenport now hopefully that he, hoping that he can run down David Krikorian for the lead here. Uh, Krikorian's in sight. There's smoke. There's trouble. No, that's Krikorian. That DK in trouble. Another reliability gremlin has bit the 13 car. After how many this year? I don't know. But that is another massive reliability concern that's going to take Krikorian out of what could have been a race win. Scott Bates now in car number six. That's DK there smoking. He's able to get that thing going still. He's able to get it moving. Oh, he's stuck. Bates got stuck behind him. And there is Ashby. Uh, come on, let's go by. Oh, wait a minute. This is a downhill section. 
Alright. Bates took a while, taking a while to get by, but there's not, there's, that's one of the parts of the track where there's not very good rearward visibility as Ruiz goes wide. So Bates gonna stay at ninth, Ashby up to eighth. There's not a whole lot of rearward visibility there, so I think Bates is worried that if he pulled out too suddenly, uh, he would have uh, caught someone blindsided, could have caught Ruiz blindsided and caused a bigger accident. Uh, let's see if we can have a better look at that from Ashby's view. We have Ashby's on board here in the 55. This is an interesting incident here, as there you see Bates stuck behind, checked his rear view mirror, he, he obviously saw Ashby coming because he stayed in line. And now we look at the rear view camera off of Zelda Ashby's car, and you can see there that there was no rearward visibility, so that was a smart move by Scott Bates to stay in line like that. Cameras like this should be available to every driver in the field uh, around Indianapolis. Uh, you see that a lot in passenger cars these days. As we see Darian Gilliam and Ike Durbin, uh, Gilliam a bit so Gilliam sideways, and there's Yevgeny Kuznetsov in the 15 car as uh, he begins to hound Gilliam for 14th. I mentioned that Kuznetsov is uh, sort of playing the long game here seemingly, and it looks like that's going to be the case. G Gilliam trying to hold off the Russian veteran. Kuznetsov all over Gilliam's rear bumper, doesn't lay into him, and Kuznetsov's going to have a great run on him coming down the front straightaway it looks like. So Yevgeny Kuznetsov is going to try to outbreak the, uh, try to get a good run on the debutante into turn one they go that's Gaspar de Souza in front of them as Kuznetsov on the inside oh runs Gilliam a little bit wide gives him just enough space and he's able to make the pass stick Kuznetsov up to 14. now he's come under fire recently for some uh, honestly extremely benign comments he made about Russian politics um, and that being said uh, talking about Russian politics under any uh, circumstance is always a bit of a minefield but uh, it was uh, some very uh, polite support for a anti-Putin politician over there and I hope things get straightened out with him and we'll straightened out with that as soon as possible uh, knowing how things can be over there uh, here is Greg Woodard in car number 41 uh, closing in on Carter Fitzgerald oh Fitzgerald wide that's some I think that damaged him earlier uh, that she had from that incident with Ellison still impacting her Woodard went by like it was nothing as uh, Fitzgerald hanging on as best she can yeah she's not uh, uh, making her case any better here as we now look at Tim Ruiz holding off reigning champion Arto Kakinen who's had a very a very quiet and a little bit of a slow start to the year uh, has Kakinen as they're trying to get around Packer Carroll and Daniel Lechleiter who which I believe is a battle for position uh, Ruiz on the inside of Packer oh Kakinen lays into his rear bumper a little bit giving a little bit of a hurry up uh, Kakinen trying to go by and looks like the lap car is staying to one side that's rather polite of them. Ruiz and Kekin are going to resume their battle. Uh, Timothy Ruiz showing uh, the front of the field that he can definitely uh, handle the pressure of running up front, it looks like. And that's the kind of drives that really get the attention of some of the teams at the front of the field. Not so much having a blisteringly fast uh, run like this, but it's how, uh, if it looks like a driver belongs at the front of the field, how calm they are under pressure like this. Especially as a rookie, uh, Timothy Ruiz is having a pretty good year, especially given uh, runs like tonight. Even though Arto Kekkonen about to come by him on the outside, Kekkonen's most likely going to clear him. Uh, no, maybe not. Ruiz got a great run off of turn four, and I don't think he's going to be able to hang on to the place. No, he's definitely not. But he definitely looks like he belongs at the, at the front end of the field. Uh, looks calm under pressure, and this is great stuff to see from a young man like him. Chris Davenport's taking the white flag now, and this is a drive that I don't think too many people would have expected uh, when he made his, uh, after his first couple of years in the Master Cup Series, especially given how error prone he used to be. Uh, he's uh, controlled the race, controlled the race pace, at least in this last stint after Krikorian and, and Eklund ran into problems, and that car is clean. There is not a mark on that car. So the, uh, the Aratel, car number 17, uh, having a serene last lap home, it looks like. Eklund way back in the distance. He has pulled out a huge gap. So Chris Davenport, there she is in the background. Davenport having a, the type of drive that I think he would have dreamed to have had back in 2013, 2014, when he still had a bit of a bad reputation around him. He has only one win to his name so far in his Master Cup career, and it came all the way back in 2013 in some rather bizarre circumstances. Uh, where there was a giant crash at the beginning of the race and there weren't many cars left. So he's definitely going to be celebrating this one if he can bring it home tonight. Uh, where he near oh, Eklund's in trouble! Liv Eklund's in trouble on the last lap! She's from second place! Oh, no! That's got to be gut-wrenching. She, she had her first win in sight. Drama with a lap car. 
as took her out of contention and then a mechanical failure with one lap to go. She's not even going to be able to salvage a podium from this as Davenport rounds the final corner, well and truly clear of everyone else, around the lap car of Cameron Taylor to take his second career victory, five years after his first. With Eklund dropping out in the final lap, this makes it a Michelin Suns 1-2 as Adrian Devereaux took second over Ryan Matthews. Matthews, in an excellent drive for his own team, completed the podium. Daffy Howard put his impressive car control on display, awarding him 40 points for a fourth place finish. Greg Woodard completes the top five in a much needed drive for the Illinois native. Great run for Carter Fitzgerald to come home sixth, although she was losing ground to Zelda Ashby, who had a fantastic drive that we didn't get to see much of. Scott Bates, all the way from 44th on the grid to eighth at the end. That's a great run for the Oklahoman. Reigning champion Arto Kakinen had a quiet race and came home in ninth. Given how his title defense has gone so far, I think he'll take that result. And how about Timothy Ruiz in 10th place, getting his second top 10 of the year in a fantastic drive for the rookie. Debutant Darian Gilliam comes home in 11th on debut. That's a good run there. Very scrappy performance by him because Nietzsche was running him down at the end. Christina Orion can hold her head high with 13th place on debut. Also a very good run. Savaral and Fuchisato are one of the many good battles that we couldn't really keep track of as much as we would have liked. Kurt Pliskin slid back down the order and wound up 16th. Scott Stoidler was involved in an incident early but fought back to 17th and he overtook Clayton Hardy on the final lap. Uh, Hardy, great effort on debut there, another Hastert car in the points. Kenny Maya made sure Tenair Motorsports came home with two championship points in a very quiet drive despite a run-in with his teammate, and Alessandro Rossini claimed the final point for Volpe. He got that point by beating Craig Yonser in a drag race to the start-finish line. For those wondering where Eklund finished, she finished 25th. She left the paddock, did not talk to any reporters, did not take her helmet off. Honestly, can't blame her. For those wondering about the pit lane confrontation between the crews of Marco Castaneda and Ingrid Hadeland, we were not informed of any updates to that. However, I would suspect a bunch of fines will be handed out Tuesday. Here's what the Drivers' Championship looks like. Fischl is still on top. However, Devereaux and Davenport have definitely closed in. Given the number of cars high in the championship that ran into problems tonight, it's not a surprise to see more cars begin to close in. Ryan Matthews, in particular, jumps into the top 10. Kakinen beginning to knock on the door of the top 10. He just collected points tonight. And if tonight is evidence of anything, it's that if David Krikorian didn't have as many reliability problems as he's had so far this year, I guarantee he would be in the top five in the championship, if not leading it. What a year it's been for Hodges Walter so far. Since no Independence Trophy car started tonight's race, nothing changed with the Independence Trophy standings. However, they will be back in action when the series returns to the Round of Ohio at the Ohio Motor Speedway. If you'd like to watch some previous events in the series, check out this list over here. Or check out these videos from friends of the show. Or if you'd like to be social, join the Discord.